street photography can sound easy on paper. Pick up a camera, head out and take photos of interesting things. Now on one level this is true, however there are skills that you can work on and improve that will result in you taking more interesting and impactful photographs. So in this episode, I'm gonna share some tips on skills you should be looking to improve as a street photographer. These are based on what I've learned doing street photography for the past five years. Probably one of the most important and least talked about skills is being able to improvise on the spot. Unlike in landscape photography and portrait photography, what happens when you're doing street photography is completely out of your hands. You can't really set it up. The people walking by, that's just by chance. And you have to be able to react to what's going on around you on the spot in real time. Shooting an interesting character is easy, but capturing that character in an interesting way to help tell a story or convey an emotion is more difficult. Improvising with your immediate surroundings is a great way to make your photos instantly more interesting. Examples can be shooting through windows or textures, using reflections if it's been raining. The possibilities really are endless. The important thing is to be mindful while you're out shooting and use what's around you. And lastly on this, it actually makes photography more fun. Rather than just walking around and capturing interesting subjects, you're going around looking at everything, finding ways you can capture a subject, but also the surrounding area. You're problem solving, you're thinking more, and the result will be more interesting photos. In all, you being able to improvise is going to be the difference between you taking a good photo and a great photo, which people are gonna remember. So patience is a huge skill in street photography. I've been guilty of this in the past where I'll find a good location and I won't wait long enough until the right subject comes into frame. I'll take my shot, I get back home and I regret the fact that I didn't wait until the right person or right subject was in my frame when I took the shot. It's not just in waiting for the right subject, it's when you're taking your shot, it's waiting for your subject to do something interesting not rushing, taking a shot and moving on. Instead, you found your subject, it's in an interesting location, you framed it up, and then you have to wait and be patient. There can be milliseconds between your subject doing something interesting and it resulting in a great photo, or your subject doing nothing, the picture appearing lifeless and boring, and it results in you taking a forgettable photo. Street photography can feel really fast paced at times especially when you're shooting in a city. There's so much going on, so many people, cars are flying by, but being able to slow down a bit, be patient, wait until the right subject comes along, that takes skill, that takes experience, and that's gonna really take your photos to the next level. Now, there's been times where I've waited for ages and nobody's come along and it's been a bit of a waste of time, but there's been other times where I've waited, the perfect subjects come into frame, and I've taken some of my favorite photos this way. Being alert and focused when you go out to do street photography is gonna make a massive difference to the photos you capture that day. From my own experience, the more alert I am when I go out to shoot, the more I see and the better photos I capture. You really shouldn't approach street photography in a relaxed mood as if you're going for a stroll in the park. Instead, approach it like work or if you're going to the gym. You need that kind of laser focus on what you're doing because everything is passing you so quickly. You really have to be switched on to the subjects walking past, what your subjects are doing, your surrounding area, the environment, the colors, the lighting. There's so much going on where if you go out with a mindset of, I'm just gonna have a fun time, or I'm not really taking this too seriously, you can end up missing a lot of stuff. Do keep in mind that you won't be able to maintain high levels of focus for multiple hours. So what I like to do is, I split my time shooting into two to three hour slots, then I take a break, have a coffee, eat some food, recharge, and then head out to the streets to shoot again.
Next up is timing, or another way to say it is to capture the decisive moment. In street photography, timing can make or break a photo. Capturing your subject just as they go to smoke or wave their arms or gesture to a friend can result in a completely different photo to one where your subject is just stood there blankly staring into the distance. The moment you capture your subject will go a long way to telling the story or conveying an emotion. So when you go out shooting, try and capture your subjects when they're doing something interesting. Remember, there can be milliseconds between your subject doing something interesting or just staring blankly into the distance. So timing that correctly and waiting to the right time to take your photo is going to make a big difference to the end result. As with most things in life, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And it's the same with street photography. The skills I've talked about in this episode develop over time and they're only developed if you do street photography over and over and over again. It's a bit like going to the gym. If you go consistently and your form and technique is right, you are going to get stronger. With photography, if you go out consistently and your technique is correct, you are going to get better photos and you are going to get better and better at taking street photos. Even if you're not feeling inspired, you should get out with your camera and look to capture a couple interesting photos each day. So that just about wraps up this video. I hope this episode helped some of you. If you have any questions about street photography, please drop them down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. If you made it all the way here to the end, a huge thanks and I'll catch you on the next one.